What's going on everybody and welcome to week number 14 of the college football season and we have a big one here for our 15 ranked Florida Gators 8 and 3 going up against number 6 Florida State who are 9 and 2 So I had a dilemma on my hands. I figured in one hand, you know, clearly this may be the most competitive game that the Gators are going to have all year. Would it be fun to play? Yes, not a make or break. But I feel like if I do play this game, that'd be the third time we featured the Florida Gators. And people might be bitching. They say Florida Gator bias. They'll be saying, you know, you're just controlling your own team. So I was like, well, there needs to be something good if I'm going to, you know, sit back, kick, kick my feet up and just watch that game. And it, there is one. There's something that will bring in the clicks. There's something that is hilarious that I definitely want to try out. Uh, so looking at some of the big top 20, uh, top 25 battles here. Not a whole lot of rank versus rank this week. We have Ohio State going up against Michigan, but Michigan has not had the best of seasons. We have number 10, Georgia, going up against number 19, Georgia Tech. Penn State, Wisconsin. UCLA versus USC, a big Pac-12 battle. So you figure with all these, there's plenty of other options we can look at taking. We're going with last chance you basically transforming into college. Florida Atlantic. Now with Lane Kiffin at the helm, they have pretty much every big name, every star that was featured on Last Chance U over the last couple years. They got John Franklin. You got uh, the quarterback from this season. You have a defensive end from this season. I can't remember the names. We'll know it when we pop into it. I feel like, you know, try to stay neutral while my Gators are playing and just see what... I mean, they're 10-1. and one. They're, They got ranked. In no way, shape, or form would that Florida Atlantic team in real life get ranked. So let's see what all the hype's about. We'll jump in here with Florida Atlantic and hope to God that our boys, our Gators, can be the good guys and win out over Florida State. But now let's see what this last chance you is all about. All right, so unfortunately, I started this before John Franklin transferred from Auburn. So that kind of stings a little bit, but we still have two of the probably most popular characters from season two of last chance you. We got Tim Bonner here playing at defensive end and at quarterback, more importantly, we have DeAndre Johnson, who obviously has been slinging that damn rock to get this team ranked to number 21. So I'm very interested to jump in and see. Hopefully Mitt Wagner. God, she's fine. Hopefully she has some impact here and we can do it for her. Uh, but let's jump right into this damn ball game. Oh, what a catch by Karim Solomon. DeAndre Johnson scraping out of the pocket. Are we gonna get a replay? We're not gonna get a replay of that one-handed catch. We got come on, we gotta fucking find it. That was worth that is worth showing a replay of. Let's play this shit. Look at this. Scrambling, waiting there for the for the break of the corner. Whoa! Jesus! Whoa! That's wacky! Oh, let's go solve it! Oh, so close! Cameron Solomon is a monster. I don't know who this guy is, but I'm a Philadelphia. I play this almost as a Philadelphia Eagles scout, and this guy here is raising eyebrows. Looks like he has the height, weight, speed that is required. I'm going to definitely have to do some in-depth scouting. And here we go, DeAndre Johnson trying to punch this one in. Get his damn team a touchdown. Let's go. Throw on the run. Hey, McGriff catches it. What the fuck is his name? Denanfrony McGriff. All right, so uh, that's a thing. Touchdown, Florida Atlantic. All right, here we go. First and goal. I think we're on the six or seven. Let's see if we can get another one here. Another dice TD. Johnson is a mobile monster. This guy here can scramble with the best of them. So this is what we're going to try to take off. See if these guys get some blocks as they do. And we run in untouched. Great ball carrier vision and pocket awareness by Johnson to realize nothing was there. To scramble and to get his team... The 10-point lead as we head into half of this. Great patience, letting his wide receivers throw the blocks, do the dirty work. Touchdown, Florida Atlantic. All right, here we go. First in 10. I think we're on the 14-yard 14, 14 line. Let's go. Get the scrambling. Throw to A. He's wide open and drops the pass. Again, it seems like Nelson Aguilar is infecting a bunch of the teams we've been able to control. Second and 10, Florida Atlantic. We'll go empty stick. We have had a lot of success throwing to the running back. So logic says, why not just pull him, right? Why not have no running back on the field? That's where you're having success. We'll step up in the pocket. We'll throw it to Solomon, who's a monster. Kareem, I keep telling him, Cameron, that look just looks win. Cameron, Solomon, five catches, 108 yards on the day. As we're here sitting here, first and goal. And John says, it's time to step back from the line line and try to do the right thing. The thing we haven't done 
in our last couple games, controlling USC, controlling Oklahoma, and that is just to run it in. Just punch it in, take the points, get the victory. Gregory Howell comes in and gets a nice little touchdown there to put us up 24-7 to here in the third quarter. All right, not going to lie, not a whole lot of highlights in that game. You know, Florida Atlantic, uh, not the best. A little bit of play of the game, though, scrambling. Look at that. Look at all the wide receiver block is what made that key. What a beast play. Last chance you living it out here, pumping it on Florida International. I think that well, that's 11-1 on the year for Lane Kiffin, a.k.a. Joey Freshwater, a.k.a. Mr. Two Dicks in your bitch. That's pretty damn good for his first year. I don't know. It seems like if that happened in real life, Lane Kiffin would be taking the first damn train out of town. I don't know. Boat. But look at that. Two total touchdowns on the day for our last chance you star. As we're looking pretty damn good. So let's pop in out of this. Go check out the scores around the league. Hopefully our Florida Gators were able to put a hurting on Florida State. Uh, we'll look at the players of the week. We'll get probably the final 25 of the year. There's still two games to be played next week. But let's be honest. Probably not going to fuck around with those. Let's jump into that stuff now. All right, so look at the scores around the country here in Week 14. Uh, I'm not going to lie. I, pretty much, I knew we were going to lose that game. As our Gators fall to Florida State 42-28, where we will finish 8-4 on the season. Ranked 25. At least we're ranked with four defeats. Still ranked. Um, I mean, anything else surprising? My, the Hurricanes are now number one in the country, so there's that's the thing. That's a thing. Uh, Washington's now ranked number two. That's, a, that's another thing. Um... Ohio State puts a hurt on Michigan 31-10. We got Georgia Tech going over Georgia. Wrong. Try it. What the fuck? That score does not match up with what they're saying here. I guess Georgia went over Georgia Tech 42-21, even though it says 31-24. What, what's the real score here? Okay, it was. Okay, it's 42-20. What the fuck? I mean, okay, it's an old game. They're going to have some hiccups. Uh, Penn State went over Wisconsin. UCLA went over USC. So USC was formerly ranked number one, now falling all the way down to seven. Uh, we got a shootout there with Wyoming. Jizz edging past Utah State 45-41. to Bama over Auburn here in the Iron Bowl. Um, Clemson won. North Carolina won. Stanford won. And we saw last chance you move to 11-1 on the year, 10-0 in their conference. So that being said, I mean, we pretty much went through the top 25, but just a look. Uh, to get a cl more clear picture, I think there could be slight shuffling, but I think the top two are going to be set, and that is the Miami Hurricanes and the Washington Huskies will finish one and two on the year. Alabama at number three, Florida State at four, Oklahoma State at five, Louisville, who I'm pretty sure plays in week 15 here at six. I mean, they would have a chance if they, they put a hurting on Cincinnati. Same with Oklahoma State. They are playing number 23, Oklahoma, this week. So there is a chance, but I feel like it probably will just go with these two teams. Um, USC at 7, Penn State at 8, Virginia Tech at 9, and Ohio State at 10. Outside of that, nothing too, too surprised. I mean, Florida Atlantic went up one spot to number 20, which is all right. Stanford got themselves ranked. Uh, but, you know, nothing too, too notable there. Uh, but let's also look at the Players of the Week. Players of the Week. Players of the Week. I don't know how to do the echo... Uh, Echo uh, effect. So, uh, New Mexico State Lobos defensive end Garrett Hughes had five sacks. So that's pretty damn terrifying. And QB Brandon Harris, the transfer from LSU, had four total touchdowns in a win against Duke. Very surprising. Reminding us that this is still very much a video game. Brandon Harris is terrible. Uh, J.K. Dobbins, the freshman running back for Ohio State, at 168 yards, three total touchdowns on the day. That guy looked really, really good in real life in Ohio State's game against Indiana here. Um, so, you know, good to see that translates over into the game. Here's the Big 12. Shane Bichelle, three total touchdowns for Texas as they beat Texas Tech. Here's the American. Quinton Flowers, four total touchdowns in the day as they beat Central Florida. So there's the Central USA. The Independents. Tanner Mangum, BYU's QB, four touchdowns. Here's the Mac. Here's the Midwest. Josh Allen, five touchdowns and a shootout victory over Utah State. Here's the Pac-12. We got Blake Barnett, the transfer from, uh, where is he, Alabama? Two touchdowns and a win over Arizona for his Arizona State, Sp uh, what are they called, the fucking Red Devils? Uh, there we have the SEC. The freshman QB got the start for Tennessee for the Vols, and he threw for four touchdowns as a win over Kentucky. Brandon Lee, the outside linebacker for Mizzou, had an interception. 
There's the Sun Belt. And that does it for the Players of the Week. So next week's going to be kind of small. You know, there's only one game, but it doesn't really make that much of a difference. So I figure we'll do Week 15. I think, you know, in between Week 15 and, you know, the, the bowl games and stuff, we'll probably... I don't know how I'm going to do that yet. I think we're going to have one episode dedicated to looking at award finalists. And then we'll have the bowl games. And then we'll have the championship game. And then we'll do the... So we have roughly five episodes. And the last episode will be a primer before the draft in the Philadelphia Eagles Connected Franchise mode. So we're looking pretty good for what we're doing now. That'll do it for today, guys. Thank you for tuning in to episode 14 of College Football. It's part of the Connected Franchise universe here on Beast Mode TV. As always, there will be a Philadelphia Eagles Connected Franchise mode video coming out later. So make sure you stay tuned for that. If this is your first time stopping by. Don't be afraid to hit that subscribe button. Uh, leave a comment in the comment section below. Smash the like button if you enjoyed. Until next time, it's C4 saying peace out.